Well, when I woke up today, I knew it was going to be a good day. So I walked in, got into the shower. I probably was only in the shower for 15 or 20 minutes. And then I got out, brushed my teeth, just found out my toothbrush was electric after all these years. Went to my closet to get my black t-shirt that I always wear. I was gonna go with a V and then I decided to go with this one. And I kind of ripped the collar. So I threw that one away before Betsy found out. Then I had to pick out my shoes. I was gonna wear these shoes, but they didn't go with my outfit. So I ended up just going with these. And then I went out here, I hate tying my laces, so I just put them on like this. It's way easier, everybody should do it this way. Betsy doesn't really like it, but what does she know? And then I jumped really high. And then I knew today was gonna be really good, so I put my hat on backwards. And I walked out the door. And then I started looking around to see if any of my kids were out there. Nobody was out there. Then I saw Betsy, I noticed she didn't make me any breakfast this morning, that was fine. I tried to give her five, she wasn't really feeling it, so I just brushed her shoulder. Went in to our fridge was looking for a Diet Coke, found one left. Looks like Betsy hasn't refilled my Diet Coke yet, which is fine, at least there was one that was cold. Tried to give her a high five again, she still wasn't feeling it. Then I started walking back into my bedroom. I yelled at the kids to go clean their room, said hi to Franny, and then I was walking back into my bedroom slash office. As I was walking back into my office, I saw that I already had a Diet Coke that was completely full. I didn't want Betsy to know that I didn't drink at all, so I put it on her side of the nightstand. And then Betsy came in to do a story. She said I was being too loud. She showed me her shoes and I said that I liked them. And then I went back to work, just typing away at all of my stuff that I needed to type. And then Betsy said that she had to leave. But before she left, I said, hey, don't you want to get that, your Diet Coke can that you left on your table? And she said, I didn't leave the Diet Coke can on your table. I said, yes, you did. She said, no, I didn't. I said, yes, you did. I have it on video. And I said, don't worry, I'll just get them. So I took the cans. And then I opened the door with one finger. Yes, you heard that correctly, one finger. And then I threw the cans away. And then I went and asked the kids, I said, hey, do you guys want to go to Swig? And Boston was like, yeah, yeah, let's go. But then I was like, wait, where's Brock? And Brock was upstairs sleeping. So I pounded on his door and I said, hey, let's go. And then I hurried and ran outside because I needed to open the pool cover, but I forgot where the key was. I knew I hid it somewhere. My hiding spots are really good. I hid it on the trampoline so no one would find it. So anyways, I grabbed it and I went back over. I opened up the key box and then I typed in the code so I could open the cover. And once that was done, I looked over and the cover was opening actually, so it was in fact working. So I typed in the code, shut the cover, locked it, and I needed to find a place to hide the key again. I was looking, hot tub cover, nope, you know what, I'm just gonna put it here in a bunch of rocks, and then I put the rocks on top of it so no one will ever find it until it's time to open the cover again. And then I heard Betsy yell and she said, hey, let's go, so I ran as fast as I could, probably was running about 15, 16 miles an hour opened up the back door. And that's when I saw everybody going out the garage door and then Betsy came back in. She said, oh, I have to use the bathroom. I said, well, hurry, because we need to get to Swig. And then I looked in and Brock was gonna drive apparently. He was texting somebody, probably his girlfriend. And the kids in the back were just waiting for mom because it seems like that's all we do lately. And then this is us driving on our way to Swig. The speed limit was 35, Brock was going 36, so he's doing pretty good. As we pulled into Swig, we noticed that the line wasn't very long. Usually it wraps all the way around, so we were kind of happy about that. Brock was getting ready to order for all of us and fixing his hair like he usually does. And then this is us just waiting in the car. We actually didn't have to wait very long, which was kind of nice. And then this is me passing the straws back to everybody like a boss. Then we had to go up to the warehouse because we had a delivery come out of nowhere. So there's the truck right there, and then this is the two buildings. That's the gate I need to open. It usually takes two guys, but I can do it by myself. And then I came over here and I opened our garage door. I needed to get the pallet jack out so we could get all the product out of the truck. So this is me grabbing it. I was super excited that we had orange pallet jacks. It's one of my favorite colors. So anyways, I was taking the pallet jack over. Don't mind the truck driver's mud flaps. They're inappropriate. But I grabbed the pallet jack. I told him, hey, back it up all the way to here. You can see my shadow. And then I wanted to show off to show you how many pallets I actually moved within the course of the hour. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I thought I'd just be there for 15 or 20 minutes, but a lot of other things happened that I needed to be there for, so which was great. Then FedEx showed up and I said, hey, do you mind moving that FedEx truck? Cause I need to get the rest of these things. So yeah, no problem. And then I saw Boston come back. He was pretty impressed that I could still drive the forklift after all these years. I waved at him, then he went back into the car. And then another truck came and then I unloaded that too, all by myself. It wasn't that big of a deal. I guess there's one other guy there, so I wasn't all by myself. And then we got into the car. We decided we needed to drive back home. And then this was me filming sideways. I had the camera facing the wrong way, which is still fine. I think you can get the gist of it. And then we went to Chick-fil-A. I got pickles on my sandwich on accident, which I actually hate. So I brushed the pickles off and then I put the sandwich back on the bread. And then once it's on the bread, I always like to hit it with my fist to make sure that everything gets packed down. 
And then I cleaned up lunch, of course. I bought the lunch and cleaned it up. Nobody seemed to care. So I threw away some of their extra food that they were gonna eat for later. And then I grabbed my Chick-fil-A cup, and then I also grabbed my Swig cup, and then I was on my way to go to the office. And then I realized that Franny was there chewing something that looked like a bracelet. It wasn't mine, so it wasn't any concern. And then I said goodbye to my family. Nobody actually even acknowledged me, so I just kept on walking until I got to my office. And then I looked out my window, and then all of a sudden I see Brock there, and they're opening the pool cover. I told Boston yesterday that he shouldn't open the pool cover, but he decided to anyway. I guess he was going to film. I, of course, wasn't happy with it because I wasn't going to be the star of the show, so I knocked on the window and I said, hey, you guys can't do that. And Boston's like, well, why can't we? And I said, because I told you you couldn't do it. He's like, I don't care, I'm going to do it anyway. And Brock thought it was just a joke, so Brock said, I'm going to push him in. He actually didn't push him in, he was just kind of joking around, so I went outside and talked to Brock and I said, hey, how's the water? He said, it's pretty cold. I put my hand in the water and kind of brushed it. Yeah, it was pretty cold and dirty. I decided to go in and get Franny. Franny hasn't been outside for a while, so I decided that I'd take her outside to use the bathroom. I always try to give her one, at least one kiss before I take her out so she knows that she's loved. Amazon came and dropped off a few packages and then I put Franny down so she could go to the bathroom. I kind of felt like she had to go number two, but she just went number one, which was fine. And I said, Franny, let's go inside. And she said, okay. So we went inside and I said, hey, let's go get you a treat. Once I gave her the treat, she growled at me. What are you gonna do? She's a dog. And then I walked into the kitchen and I said hi to Betsy again. She didn't acknowledge me for the second time of the day, which is fine. And then I started walking throughout the house to see if anybody would want to talk to me. And then I found Boston. He's always good to talk to. I said, hey, Boston, how are you doing? He said, oh, I'm good. I'm just editing a video. He said, what are you doing? I said, no, I'm just filming. So I decided to go back into my office so I could get some work done. But then Betsy came in and she was talking on the phone and she was really loud when I was trying to do my voiceover. And I was waiting for her to leave very patiently. And then she wasn't gonna leave. So anyways, I stood up and I got out. I opened the door and kind of slammed the door hard behind me so she knew that I was a little bit upset with her. I got thirsty after I got mad, so I went to the kitchen to grab another drink. Oh, it looks like Betsy didn't refill my drinks after I drank my very last one. Usually she does that. So I had to take it upon myself and fill up myself, which I always hate because it gets cold by the fridge. So I grabbed a warm one instead and went back to my office, hoping that she wasn't there, but when I got there, she was. She was still on the phone. She said she was working, but doesn't really feel like it. So I had to leave again. And then I went out into the living room, looked around, and then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go downstairs. So I went downstairs, and then oh, Brock was downstairs, so I couldn't even do my voiceover. He was on the phone FaceTiming with one of his friends. So I went downstairs, and I was really mad, and I needed to blow off some steam. So when I went to the gym, I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a few push-ups. I was tired from this morning because I worked out a lot, so I was gonna do about 50 push-ups. And then when I got to about number three, my arms kind of got sore, so I decided to give up and stop doing them. I knew I still needed exercise, so I found this ball and I jumped on it three or four times just to get my legs going again. After I did that a few times, it was pretty boring, so I decided to grab a basketball, so I was going to shoot 100 shots. I dribbled the ball, but the ball was flat. It's been downstairs in this cold gym. I shot one shot and made it and thought, you know what, that's good enough. I decided to go upstairs to see if anybody else is clear out of my area. I really need to get work done. As I was going up the stairs, I thought somebody was behind me. I still get scared to this day when I walk up the stairs because I always think a ghost is going to grab me. She was in my room again, but I was happy to see her this time. I said, hi, Betsy, how are you? So Boston came in and was asking us when we were gonna heat the pool, and I said, I'm not sure. And Betsy was still working. And then I realized that the pool cover was still off. So I hurried and ran outside as fast as I could, faster than probably most people. I needed to dig up the key so I could lock the cover again, but I forgot where I put the key. I know it was over here somewhere. I just have to move a few rocks around. It won't be a very big deal. I think I put it in the light colored rocks, but I can't really remember. Maybe it's just open. Maybe I can just go and open it. Nope, I can't. It's locked. But that's okay, because I think I'm still going to find it. I have a feeling it's like right around here. I'll just move a few more rocks. My hands are starting to get sore because I'm moving so many rocks, but that's okay. You know what? Maybe I'll just leave it open for the rest of the year. Oh, you know what? I think I left it in the shed. On the way to the shed, I almost got stung by a hornet. I'm allergic to basically everything. Just kidding, I'm just scared of them, so I always tell people that I'm allergic. I lifted up the battery pack, because sometimes I put keys under there. It wasn't under there this time. I looked on top of the sprinkler box, it wasn't there either. Sometimes I try to put keys under places that I can remember really easily, but sometimes I can't. Sometimes I put it under wheels, because I think it's easy to find them when they roll, and then you're like, oh, there's a key here. Glad I put it there. I think the last place I might have put it was in the garage. There's the car, it's parked outside now that Brock and Boston's car is in the garage, which is kind of annoying. Oh, I did lock that, I forgot. And the boys still need to clean that up. I'm glad I came over this way. Oh, I was looking around, I heard Betsy call me and say dinner was ready. 
I think she meant that I was supposed to make dinner, but I wasn't clear about it. I walked in and it looked like somebody had robbed us. There was stuff everywhere, all over the ground. Looks like Betsy got another package, probably from Amazon or one of the other swipe ups that she does. Anyway, so I picked up all of that stuff again and I threw it away. This is like the third time I picked up the stuff after everybody. I was pretty tired from doing everything all day, so I decided to go to bed early. It was like five o'clock. I always try to sleep with my hat on so it doesn't mess up my hair. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.